Uh, amen. He's, he is risen from the dead and he's at work. He's at work in the lives of his people. I was, I've been hearing testimonies back all week from what God's done for those that uh, last week we had, you know, the Lord met with us throughout the day. And then on Sunday night, there was a number of chains broken for people. There were situations that have shifted entirely, isn't it? The things that we thought, well, you know, I don't know if that could ever change. And uh, you have stories of what he's done for you, don't you? Yeah? Everyone got quiet then because you think I'm going to call on you. You bet you I'm going to call on you. Why is that? Because, you know, listen, when you, give, when you give testimony of what Jesus has done for you, it brings glory to God. It gives him glory. When we keep it to ourselves, man, if, if, giving, if giving the testimony gives him glory, what does keeping the testimony, not saying anything does? Would it rob glory from God? Um, see, we need to be clear. See, the testimony of the saints, the testimony of the saints of what God does in their lives is really important to share that out. It brings glory to God. It testifies. He's the one that fixed my situation, not me. Yeah, it gives credit where credit's due. And that's really important because there's somebody else that might be sitting next to you thinking, I don't know, maybe my situation's just beyond help. And your testimony is going to go, actually, nope, he's alive and he's at work and he can move in whatever situation it is. Amen. Amen. So who's the first one that's going to give testimony tonight of what Jesus has done? Yes. Here we go on. Go on. Right. 2015, my, my whole life went upside down. Social services kicked my husband out. They took my kids off me. I was left on my own. You get a... I was left on my own completely. Church came along and they carried me. Literally Jeez. had to pick me up from my bootstrap and say, come on, get a grip. Um, now, I cut it short because I don't want to have everything, but I cut it short. They told me, you never on your husband back. And if you do, you never get your kids back. But well, right now in my house, my two sons are living with me. My husband's home with me. And my other kids are on their way home. <laughs> so, amen. <laughs> amen. God is good. God is good, isn't he? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Who else? Who's got a testimony of something there? Ben. Come on up, Bo. Make sure you speak up loud in there. Very good. Yeah. So last Sunday... Uh, I got freedom like I, I don't know for how long I was living in sin uh, doing things I shouldn't be doing being deceitful lying still coming to church but not really submitting myself to God and last Sunday I just I got so broken that I just submitted myself and I'd been living for, with fear for so long in my life. I used to sleep with the light on because I, when I was a child, something happened to me. I don't know what happened, but I know it was demonic oppression or something. And from Sunday, uh, when I went home, all of that was just taken away and I slept with the light off. Oh. And <laughs> Jesus is good. <laughs> Throughout this whole week, like, uh, I got my voice back as well, my, my tongue. Uh, my passion, my just on fire for God again. Coming to the prayer meetings, going out yesterday, evangelizing, just what I should be doing, amen, being amen, a saint. Amen, God amen. is great, guys. Amen. He is. Amazing. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> now, who else? What else we got? Yes. Yes. I'd just like to share something quickly. Make a long story short. Um, for six, also 2015, the, the devil attacked our house. And um, so we had troubles with our, my stepson, my wife's son. He was hooked on drugs and things. And there was some false accusations ma made. I went to the court cases and the court cases went on for 10 months. And now six years on, yesterday, out of the blue, it comes knocking on my door. And he's clean. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God is good. Six years of praying and praying and praying. 
And uh, this afternoon I get a phone call and says, we're sorry for what we've done, for what we put you through. And I just give God the glory for that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Sheldon, do you want to add anything to that? I know you do, so I, that's why I'm asking. That's right, you sit there. And you know, it's, it was a long six years, and I, with this accusation of my granddaughter, I, I took my husband's side, and it caused a lot of friction through the family, but I, I stood on God's word that I must stand with my husband. And I thought, oh, this is never going to come to light. It followed us around for about two and a half years until we moved out of Newport and came to Marshfield. And it started then to die down and we were in a different place. And a month ago, just about a month ago, I saw a photo on Facebook of my grandson that I had seen since he was three months and he's now six. And this granddaughter that made the accusations. And I just clicked, liked, that's all I did. And it caused a bit of friction with one of my daughters. And then my son's partner kept texting me and I was texting her back. And I turned around and I said to her, does my son know that you're texting me? And she said, yes, we're doing it together. But we couldn't then talk no more on Facebook because it, get, it got private. So we went over Messenger and for about three weeks, we've been texting and they wanted to see me. And my granddaughter wanted to see me, and but they told her that he wasn't in my life. And so that caused a bit of friction. And on the Tuesday, my son phoned me and said, well, we can't come and get you at the door you're going to have to walk. So I said, Daniel, let's leave it at that and I'm going to pray about it and I'll phone you on Friday. And I phoned him on Friday and I said to him, look, you've got to sit that child down. That child's been through how much and we still don't know the truth. We got to, you've got to sit down that child and tell that child, that child must know that he's in my life and he's there. So they sat her down and she accepted it. No, fine, I still want to see my nana. Then that we got talking and they got to know what was going on in my life personally and things that I needed. And then she started saying to them, but I want to go and help my nana. I want to go and look after my nana. And they said to her, Olivia, you can't because you don't want to see. Well, at that time we were calling in him. And um, she said, okay, then I'll go doesn't matter I'll go so that was fine we had that so all this week we've been talking to her is this what you want to do as this she said yes I will come back in with you and I will bring up her food I said fine and then on Friday night they went and bought me a flower to bring to me and she wrote on the flower to Nana and to Opa Yay, he's Opa. yeah he's Opa and um, the knock came at the door yesterday morning for me now to go to them. I thought it would be just my son's partner. It was all four of them. They came and they said to Clifton, well, what are you going to do now? Because they were going to invite Clifton now as well, because they'd, both of them had spoken about it and said, this couldn't have happened if she's this eager to go there. And she went. Um, and they all came in and they were all happy for about 10 minutes and we left, which I was glad because I could have time with them and time to make sure that the ground was right. Well, when they came back, they dropped, brought me back at 20 to six. They never left my home till, till at nine o'clock last night. <laughs> and they come in tomorrow for food. We go into them on, on Wednesday and Friday, they back at me. It's like we've planned for a week already. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to encourage anybody over here as well. It's like a weight that is just lifted off. Amen. And um, not with a constant, when you're going to meet them in the street, what's the reaction going to be? But God knows the right time. Ah. So if anybody's going through troubles, 
Just be patient. Just be patient. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Oh, Amen. And share it with someone where two or three are gathered in His name, where they mm. agree. Yeah. Things happen. But if you keep it to yourself, you're going to walk like a question mark all the time. But when you share it, there's such a relief when, yes. when you see things happening. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that our God is a reconciler. Isn't it? He takes... Yes. Yes. I had that word. That's right. We had that word for you, all of the family. And we prayed that. And the Lord's... He's just so good. He just, he'll release His word at the right time. And it just it takes away chains. It, it can change hearts. And it's amazing. We have a, he's alive. Jesus yes. has really risen from the dead. He's really alive and he's worth following. <laughs> you know, he's, he's, he is the God of the universe become man. And, uh, and we trust him and we're going to follow after him. Who else? Who else has got a testimony? Anyone? Uh, all right. Yeah, we got a couple of them here. Three, like three hands went up all of a sudden. I'll start here and then I'll work around. Hallelujah. Huh? I'll take back for you. I do both of them. <laughs> right, okay. I'm greedy. All right, two, two testimonies. Two yes, testimonies. Okay, go on. All right, yeah, I got I'm you. greedy. Yeah, go on. Um, in my job, I get so much liberty to, um, to talk to the people I look after about Jesus. Um, and I've got one particular lady. She is a born-again Christian. And I see her twice a week. Um, and every time I go, we get to pray. We'll, um, we'll look at the Bible. I don't get a lot of work done, but it's just so nice to spend this time with her. <coughs> We've been praying for about eight months for her family, for her children. Um, their mum is, is terminally ill, so obviously they've really struggled with it. Um, so we've been praying really intensely twice a week for her children. A couple of weeks ago, she told me that her daughter had said that she, she wants to follow Jesus. Wow. Friday, the daughter was there when I got there. <laughs> I spent the calls an hour. I think I spent the hour talking to the daughter. I got to pray with her. Hallelujah. She has got Jesus. strongholds, chains Jesus. and addictions. Jesus. So I was really bold and I prayed for them Jesus. with her. I think Jesus. by the end of it, she was in tears. I was in tears. Kashif, I believe, because it started off as she said to me, have you got a Pakistani guy in your church? I said, yes. Well, apparently he'd gone to her house. I don't know when it was and bought something off her and had said to her, do you know Jesus? Can I pray for you? And he prayed for her on the doorstep. Sounds that's, like a sheep, yeah. yeah that's like exactly sheep, yeah. what I said. I said, that sounds like yeah, a sheep. Like sheep yeah. So that actually started the conversation with her. Um, and it was just such an amazing time. And it's just that, you know, we spent that twice a week praying. I pray for him in my, my quiet time, but I spend twice a week praying for her family and her daughter. I have invited her to church. Um, and I'm still having conversations with her. She's got my number. Um, so please pray for her, for Becky, that, 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 that I can get her to, to come here. She sure. lives literally down the road. Lord, bless Becky in Jesus' name. Lord, bless her family. Bless her home in Jesus' name. Lord. Amen. 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 Um, the other testimony is, because of my work, I can't get to prayer. Well, on Friday, I actually finished early. And I really felt... I had to come. So I rang Tony and I said, I, I want to go to prayer. He said, well, I'd actually been thinking the same thing. But fair enough. So I picked him up. We came along to prayer. It was an amazing time. And I really encourage you to come along. It, it was such an amazing time. But we were praying and I was praying for, for provision for a number of things. Obviously, I'm praying for, for my trip away. All through the week, one of my bank accounts has had £24 in it. A week. Friday, fr Saturday morning, I happened to look at my bank account. It's £50 more than it was the day before. Nothing to say that money's gone in. <laughs> it was just suddenly £50 yeah. more. 
than it was 24 oh, hours oh, before. Man. Don't tell Lloyds, yeah. Don't tell Lloyds. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, but yeah, Hallelujah. so, so no, just trust him. He, he just, just, just. Oh wow! I, Everyday I'm, stuff, isn't it? It's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. It is. It's it's just yeah. Amen. Amazing. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, Maggie, you want to share? The testimonies to come, and the Lord is good, and He's been amazing uh, in my life. But on um, this, on last week, um, I was out in the garden, just digging the garden, and Katrina drove past. And uh, she often does because she lives near me. And um, she said, oh, do you fancy going for a walk? And I said, yeah, it'll be lovely to go for a walk. So we walked down to Roth Park. And um, 20 years ago, 20 years or more, I had a lovely relationship with a, a lovely lady and her husband. And they had two children. But something terrible happened in their family. And I was asked by the police to give some information. And from that day on, we didn't speak again. Really, really difficult situation. But um, I did a, along the way, I did ask her, would she, you know, consider forgiving me, you know, for being open, whatever, and having to, and she just was very silent. But, you know, the Lord brought this, that I was in the park with Katrina, and she just walked past with her husband and her child, and we greeted each other and said hello as if nothing had ever happened, and we were able Jesus. to speak. And I knew it was just a wonderful, like you said, restoration. Yeah. It is a time, I believe, a season of restoration. Yeah. And, and that meant so much to me. I couldn't explain it, but it meant so much to me because there's been 20 years of that pain inside because, you know, she, we just didn't speak. And we had such a lovely friendship and it was wonderful. So that, that's been really good. And she wants to, you know, meet up again at some time, which is going to be awesome. And, um, and then on the way back, we walked back, Katrina and I, and I, I've got a neighbor next door to me. I love him to bits. He's a gorgeous character. And um, he, um, we, I, I prayed with him. He's a very, he does suffer a lot and I prayed with him. But um, he was digging his garden with his brother and another neighbor across the road came over as well. And Katrina said, let's, um, let's go, you know, go and see what's happening. So we went over. And then he was having a problem with the, with the extension and he couldn't get the extension going as well as he wanted and he was really upset. Katrina said, let's pray. I went, I stiffened. I thought, there's three men, we gotta pray. And I was like really nervous because it was my neighbor and my neighbor's brother and the neighbor across the road. <laughs> so Katrina said, do you mind if we pray for you? So they said, no. And you know what was so amazing was to see this woman of God there praying and these men put down their shovels, they bowed their head and they engaged in the prayer. And I am so excited for what the Lord is going to do in my, you know, in the, in the neighborhood. Amen. So, you know, just let's just pray that they Amen. do receive Amen. the Lord because they, they need the Lord and there's, there's something wonderful that the Lord is, is doing in that place. So, Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Right, Glenn? Yeah, right? Is that on? Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, 2003. Um, We're not going back that far, are we? No, no, I'd oh. be five minutes. I know I, I, know I speak too much. I <laughs> uh, lost my job. Uh, didn't I wasn't a Christian at the time uh, lost my job then my marriage broke down that was tough uh, for two years I was in a really bad place and sort of tried to pick myself back up together it was pretty tough um, got myself back together then a friend in dancing invited me on an alpha in Christchurch so I went to Alpha, the steam was down low, depression, all that sort of stuff. But oh my goodness, that changed my life. It completely changed my life. Um, it was almost like too perfect to be true. Because at that right moment, he saved me. And I just did not feel worthy. Did not feel good enough for anything. But um, one of the books I first read was the book of Job. And in there it says, uh, uh, it's to do with faith. And it says, he lost a lot of stuff, Job. He lost his family. He lost his job. He lost everything. And even his friends disowned him. And that story is unbelievable. 
because he'll restore everything. Um, uh, only, oh, I'm nearly there, bro. wait. <laughs> only about two years ago, um, through a friend, Sophia Ferrara on Facebook, I got chatting with a lady in the Philippines, of all places. I'm like, this is bizarre. Um, so, my name is Emma. Uh, we're getting married next year. COVID willing. <laughs> but um, uh, before I went to the church, I was in Vineyards. I said, look, I want prayer. And, uh, you know, because I'm going a long way. And uh, thank you. And uh, I got there and I, I just knew it was meant to be. Anyway, uh, there's an amazing family. Emma's got five uh, sisters, five brothers, huge family, all Christian. And just that, just that hope. And, and I hope this encourages anybody that's going through a breakup when things have gotten right. I was given a book, and I'll never forget this. It was, um, it was Spurgeon. It was a morning and evening. And Wade said it the other day. God does all things for the good of those who love him. Never forget that. Whatever you're going through, it's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. He's in charge. He knows what's going on. And he will wipe away every single tear. But not only that, he gives you 20,000 times things better, which is mind-blowing. And I'll stop talking now. <laughs> Just wait, you're, wait, sir. You're me. fine, you're fine, you're good. Excellent. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Anyone else have a recent testimony? You don't need to go back to 2003, but uh, a recent testimony, yes. Uh, going back to restoration, um, back in August, I had the word given to me about my brother, my eldest one. I haven't spoken to him in over six years. Um, he was abusive, so I cut him out of my life. God said, restore. I was like, okay. I reached out to him. There was no answer. A couple of months later, he got in contact. Back in January then, I went up to visit him and my youngest niece, who I watched being born. So, yeah, I was in there and just seeing the love that this little girl had, she didn't know me, but yet she went, I love you so much. It, it was just so amazing and just to talk to my brother and just to hash things out and he's like can you ever forgive me mm. and I was like yeah I forgive you and he's like well how can you forgive me I was like well how can I ask God to forgive me if I can't forgive you yeah. and he was like okay so you're religious I said no I have a faith yeah. I said I believe that God brought us back together for a reason mm. I said I love you no matter what he's like but yeah he's still angry with me I didn't realize I was still angry with him Sunday night Grace prayed for me that anger was released. Amen. When, Wednesday night, I had a phone call from an unknown number. I was like, I don't answer unknown numbers, but I answered it. It was my brother. He said, you can come up to my house anytime you want. He said, I want to rebuild and restore our relationship. So I was like, come on, if this went God, in, then what was it? But yeah, like just releasing that anger, just seeing him. And I didn't realize I was holding on to so much, honestly. Give it up. God has a better plan for your life. <laughs> Honestly, he really does. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's some good. This is real life stuff, isn't it? Yeah. It's real life stuff. All right, Grace. Sorry. Um, actually, um, it was probably about two weeks ago. Um, I came home from work and uh, I found there was a check in the mail, and it was. Um, uh, the stimulus check from the states and uh, because I'm doing schooling as well and taxes and all that kind of stuff I h happened to like be able to get one and came in the mail and I was like oh well why is this money here like Lord are you giving it to me to give to someone else is there something that you have this for specifically and I was just praying I was like Lord I don't like are you just blessing me are you doing this and then there was um and then I heard back from my school that they do financial aid and other things like that. And I was getting back a lot more money <laughs> from them. And I was like, Lord, this is a lot of money. Like, why, why are you giving us, why are you giving us this? Like, are you, is there something that you have for it? Like, and I was really just asking the Lord because I was like, this is, this seems kind of out the blue. Um, and then we had our car MOT'd on, um, was it Wednesday? Wednesday. And um, 
they were like, oh yeah, it was only going to be 50 pounds for the MOT, and then they were like, oh yeah, and the exhaust needs to be all changed, so that was another 300 pounds, and then it was, oh, you're going to need a new, um, a new timing belt and a whole like um, uh, tune up on the car or something like that, and it was going to be like, and it, it worked out to be the exact amount that the Lord brought in and through those two checks. And so it was, I had no idea, but the Lord knew before I knew. And he was like, I'm just going to put that right there. And yeah, it's right there. Amen. 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 Now there were some people healed this morning, wasn't there, Nat? Um, well, oh, I think, I think Yulin needs to stand up as well over there and share her story. So I'm going to quickly jump over to Yulin and then jump back to me. So Yulin, why don't you tell them what happened to you this morning? was um, I was having back pain I was sitting down here I was sitting like that like that so I thought I'm going out for, for prayer but then uh, someone was praying so I was saying like that in Jesus name heal me Jesus heal me so nobody touched me so I just went out for prayer it's you I said no pain <laughs> oh, praise the Lord Amen. Um, there was, there was, there were, I'm trying, I'm going to have to, give me a moment. I got to remember how many people were healed today and through how many services. Okay. First service, we, um, we had someone with bad knees healed. Um, it was their right knee. We had, um, a guy came up and he was like, my knees been hurting me. Um, Mary, uh, Mary came up, she was praying, and we prayed for her knee, and God had completely healed her knee. She had pain on the inside of it, and God healed it, hallelujah. And then, and then there was another, uh, in the second, then in the second service, um, there was uh, a lady priest, she, 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 her leg was hurting because she had broken it, and her ankle didn't heal, and it was still pressure in the back of the ankle, and uh, me and Sinead were praying for it, and 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 it was healed completely and god touched it no more pain as she was walking completely gone hallelujah then her husband came up and he's kind of like i mean he's big he's a big guy and he's kind of like walking like this like mr hunchback and then all of a sudden we passed away was praying for him and his back and his 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 back was healed and his leg was healed and he could stand up straight and walk without any pain hallelujah <clears throat> God is good, and and passed away. He he um he, he said he had pressure in his face, pressure in his nose because of his sinuses. <laughs> you know, are you, and 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 we prayed for him, and then all the pressure was released, and God touched him. And what else? Um, yeah, and uh, God is good. And then when we were uh, we went to go get coffees. I was with Edson. We went went to go get coffees, and um. It was interesting because sometimes you, you wait for a moment to share the gospel. You know, you kind of like, you're gauging the conversation. You're kind of waiting for where's my little slip road into the conversation. Edson doesn't do it like that. He just kind of like, he's like, he's like a SWAT team, you know, with the, with the breaking down the doors. So, you know, I just think sometimes you don't, you don't wait for the opportunity. You just kick the door down and <laughs> you go in and Edson was like, is your back hurting? And, and the guy's like, kind of, yeah, why? And he's like, oh, put your hand on it. Okay, he's like, okay. And then he, he just put his hand and he says, keep it there. And the guy tries to take his hand. No, that's, no, keep your hand there. You know, <laughs> so the guy's kind of like, they're looking at Edson like, what are you going to do to me? And he's like, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And then the guy was like, he was like, Edson, Edson was like, check it. And the guy's like, Edson, Edson's like, no, check it. You know, <laughs> and he's, and so, so he's going like this and he's like, yeah, it's much better much better what, what, what's you know like asking questions and all this and he's like Jesus Christ loves you and he's like thank you you just made my night and then you know and we, we pulled away and I just uh, God is good God is good and you know you know we we're just hearing the restoration of families you know we think of restoration as taking an old piece of furniture and making it as if it was brand new that's not God's standard of restoration God takes it back to what it was, but then seven times better. That's God's standard of restoration. That's God's standard. So um, I'm expectant. I don't know if anybody, does anybody have a bad ankle here right now? Bad ankles. Okay, Glenn. Anyone else? Claire, you have bad ankles. All right. And, and, and um, Benji, his ligament. Uh, come here, Benji. Let's, let's go on. 
God. Benji, what was wrong with you this afternoon with your with your ligament? For since I was a little, uh, about, when I was about 16, uh, at the end of my football career, I was really good at football. I should have been professional, but I tore my hamstring and earlier Sinead was playing and uh, Keep it. nah, and it's just gone, you know, like, it's just, it's restored. I can squat everything. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so we're going to, you know, guys, if God did this throughout the day, He'll do it now again because his name is never changed. His name is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. And by his name's sake, by the name of Jesus Christ, people are healed. So, guys, we're going to point our hands towards Claire because I know Claire is suffering with, with bad ankles. And, and she's suffering with bad eyes. So we're just going to stand in the name of Jesus. And, and, and those of you who are around her, put your hand on her because we're, we're standing in faith. Because she put your hand on her in Jesus' name. We're going to see a breakthrough tonight, yes? We're going to see a breakthrough because his name is Jesus. So in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command your legs, your ankles to be healed. All that swelling to go down now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, right now. All the pain to go now in Jesus' name. That tomorrow morning you will wake up with no pain. You will wake up with no pain in Jesus' name. Claire, he loves you. He loves you. You are accepted in his sight. You are accepted in his sight. And in the name of Jesus, I command your eyes, all that pressure building up in Jesus' name, I command it to be released now. Pressure be released in the name of Jesus. Pressure be released in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Claire, would you be willing to test your ankles? Would you be willing to test your ankles for us tonight? Hallelujah. Is it still the same? still the same okay saints we're gonna go again we're gonna hit it again the bible says the word of the lord is like a hammer sometimes you have to smack a wall a few times before it crumbles right so in the name of jesus we're gonna take the the hammer of the the word of the god in jeremiah it says that my word is like a hammer it crushes rock so in the name of jesus that stubborn thing go now in the name of jesus be healed in jesus name be healed in jesus name Father, that the pressure would go, Lord, that your cooling balm in Jesus' name would embalm her in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Bind the spirit of infirmity in Jesus' name and command it to go in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. How are you feeling now, Claire? Any difference? Slight difference? Jesus. Jesus. She, you're an eight so she said she was a 10 to begin with now she's an eight the wall's coming down will you stand with me and go to a zero yes so in the name of jesus we command that pain that pressure to go now in jesus name oh father that you would come through by your spirit and that pressure would go for your name's sake, Father, for your name's sake, for Jehovah Rapha, in the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you restore. We're hearing our testimonies of restoration. Restore her feet, Father. Restore her feet. How are you feeling now, Claire? How are you feeling? Still the same? Father, we're going to pray. And Lord, we thank you for healing. We thank you for healing. We thank you for healing. Father, we thank you that your name is Jehovah Rapha. And you are the Lord, our healer. We trust your name. We trust in you. And Lord, we thank you that you're here and you're healing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, be healed. Ankles be healed in Jesus' name. Ankles be healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are healing now. That the eyes be healed. Ankles be healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. We're standing in faith. In Jesus' name. Be healed. In Jesus' name. Jesus. How are you feeling, Claire? Is it less? Guys, Wayne, Glenn, just for a moment, just 
better. Yeah. See, see how she's feeling. <laughs> Can you, can you turn that on for a second? It's gone halfway, Saints. Halfway. See, you don't know this, but every Monday she, she's in bed because her ankles are so swollen after a Sunday being on them all day. So we're halfway there. We're going to go all the way. Our God is not a cowboy builder who does half a job. He does a full job. A complete healing. So in the name of Jesus, be healed in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for total healing. We thank you for total healing. Lord, we thank you that you hear the cry of your people. In Jesus' name, be healed. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Lord, we love you. and we, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, be healed. Ankles be healed in the name of Jesus. Pressure, go now in Jesus' name. Soreness, go now in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. is still about a five we're gonna pray lord jesus you are the healer we're gonna we're gonna be like as it were like that bulldog that latches on until the, until there's a fullness until there's everything released thank you father lord that you are healing you are healing and we're gonna go for the completion father we thank you we thank you we thank you thank you jesus thank you jesus just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're the healer. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're healing Claire. Thank you that those ankles will be full and operational. There won't be any swelling in Jesus' name. No more swelling in the name of Jesus. No more swelling. say the pain has gone down to about a three and I can only feel the pain in the left not the right now okay um here okay I'd say it's down to about a three I've got no pain in the right but it's just in the left hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus Let's finish it off, saints. Let's finish it off. The Father has given you authority and power by the Holy Spirit to command that leg to be healed in the name of Jesus. So in the name of Jesus, be healed in Jesus' name. Left leg, we command all that pain to go now and to never return in Jesus' name. That shall never suffer with this anymore in Jesus' name. Never to suffer with this in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Full healing. Lord Jesus, thank you for your saints that are standing in faith. They're standing in the gap. Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Still about a three. Father, we thank you that you are completely healing it. Father, we thank you that your word is the hammer and it is breaking it down. It is restoring in Jesus' name. It is restoring in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Father, I thank you right now for healing in that leg. And Lord Jesus, I just thank you that all the swelling will go down. All the pain will go now. 
obey the word of the Lord, Aleg. I command you to be restored to the way God has created you to be in the name of Jesus. I command you never to return. I command that her legs will be fine and she'll be up and about tomorrow. She'll not have to uh, uh, just rest them. And Lord, that your healing power be made known in Claire. There be a testimony of your goodness and your glory in Jesus' name. How are you feeling now, Claire? How's that ankle? Still the same. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Faith is in the moment in, in time. There's all whole leg, her whole right leg has been healed. Hallelujah. Her left leg still has a three. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, by your stripes, Claire is healed in Jesus' name. It is your word in Jesus' name. Father, come and do what only you can do. Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Does, uh, as they're praying for Claire, I just felt like, does anybody is suffering with like eyesight or eye pain or anything like that? Yeah? It's going away. Wow, well, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Jason said he had pain in his leg. And then the pain is now just going. You know, I just, I wonder if you, if you have a sickness right now, just ra raise your hand if you, if you genuinely just have a sickness and we'll just pray that God heals you. Whatever it is, we'll pray that God heals you. Lord Jesus, we pray for healing over Kath in Jesus' name. Lord, whatever it is, be healed in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for healing. We thank you, Lord, that you are touching people tonight. And Lord, we just thank you for healing in the name of Jesus. We thank you for healing. We thank you, Lord, that you love Kath. You are for her and not against her. And Lord, that you are strengthening her and equipping her. And Lord, we just thank you that you are healing in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? Shall it? Shall it, Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you right now for Shelly in Jesus' name. Is it for your, your back? Sciatica and a bit of constipation. Okay. Jesus. Okay. A sciatic nerve in her back. So in Jesus' name, we command that sciatic nerve to be released and to be healed in the name of Jesus. We command it to go now in Jesus' name. All that pain to go now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that pain is not from your kingdom. It doesn't belong in heaven and it doesn't belong in your saints. So in the name of Jesus, we command healing right now in Jesus' name. All pain to go now. Thank you, Father. Jesus. When I came in tonight, um, this afternoon I had my brother for lunch and I had to go and lie on the bed because it was so, and Clifton thought I wouldn't come to church and I said, no, I'm going. Hallelujah. And it had a, I've had about a nine, now I'd say it's about a three or four. Yeah, Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, there's Bible verses that says the, the Lord was present to heal. I just wonder if the Lord is here tonight present to heal. So in the name of Jesus, we just command full healing in the name of Jesus. We thank you for complete healing in the name of Jesus. Total healing in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for healing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Healing now in Jesus' name. All pain go now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 How are you feeling now, Shelly? Much better. It's a, it's a one. It's a one. Hallelujah. Jesus is good. Jesus is king. Father, we thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Wow. Jesus, come on. Jesus is king. He is king. He is king. 
Hallelujah. Lord, we pray for strengthening in our whole body in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, that every muscle, tendon, nerve, ligament be restored, bones be restored. Jesus, Lord, you said, Lord, you will restore sevenfold. So in the name of Jesus, be restored seven times in your body in Jesus' name. Full healing in the name of Jesus. Full healing in Jesus' name. Jesus. Jesus. Does anybody have a pain in their wrist at all? You, Glenn, you have it? Anybody else have a, have a pain in their wrist? Just raise your hand so I can see you. Jesus, so it's just Glenn. Okay. Which wrist, which wrist is it? Oh, okay. Okay. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you right now for Glenn. We thank you for his life. And Lord Jesus, right now we just command arthritis to go now in Jesus' name. We command all the pain to go now in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that you're healing people tonight. Your power has been made known. Your fire has fallen upon your people. So Lord Jesus, we thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. See if, you, see if it's any better now. It's, it's gone. All the pain's gone. Hallelujah. Completely gone. How about in that in the other wrist? Is it still? There? Oh, there's a little bit here. Father, we thank you, Lord. You're healing now in Jesus' name. All arthritis to go now. All pain to go now in Jesus' name. Jesus. Jesus is king. Jesus is king. See how it is now? It's better. Is it gone? nearly gone thank you lord jesus that it's a two and lord we thank you that you are not you are not a cowboy builder who does half a job you make things completely brand new you heal you restore and by the power of the holy spirit in the name of jesus i command this wrist to be restored to be rehealed in the name of jesus healing now healing now in jesus name healing now in jesus name go on see how your wrist is it's gone hallelujah 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 jesus jesus is there, is there anyone here who else who needs a touch in their body physically jesus carol what do you need a chesty cough <laughs> well this thing's going isn't it it's your asthma this thing's going if god could heal ankles if god could heal sciatic nerve if god could heal bad wrist and arthritis if god could heal calf then your sinuses are feeling much better hallelujah if our god can do this what is there anything he cannot do no, there's nothing he can do. I mean, there's nothing he cannot do. He can do everything. He can do anything he wants to. He is God. There is healing and power. So in the name of Jesus, we command your lungs to be full. We command your lungs to open up. So in the name of Jesus, be healed. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Go on, take a deep breath in. How's that feel? God must be doing something. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. I took my peak flow the other day and it was so low. But when I took a breath in, because you have to take a breath in first, I couldn't do it because I was coughing so much. Oh, wow. That was a deep breath I just so, took so in. If you took a deep breath, you would have coughed. Yeah. And you just did that. And yeah. you didn't cough. No. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go and take one more. Take another one. He is the very breath of God. He is the one who restores our breath. He is the one. Jesus. Amen. <laughs> you want a taster of what revival looks like? Part of it. Anyone else? Jesus. Yes. Lord Jesus, healing now. Amen. In Jesus' name. Jesus, break every chain. This is just, I think this is going to be the last one, Pastor. Okay. <laughs> okay. Jesus. 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 Said, where, is, where is your faith right now? Do you guys see these kinds of things will either bring you to a place Jesus. of faith or unbelief? And Jesus. it'll do it very quickly. Jesus. All right, either you're going to go, oh, I don't know, or you're going, absolutely, and faith Jesus. will rise. Now, I just want to say, faith is not a place. Jesus. And it's not a time. Jesus. 
Okay, what do I mean by that? It's not about a time period, right? He says you can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Jesus. Sometimes it will be, and then, there's, and then it, will, it will progressively shift, one. Jesus. Uh, secondly, is that um, you can believe here for someone else somewhere else. Yes, yes. Are you hearing me? Okay, because my guess, even as I just said that, yep. different names began to shoot up yep. in your mind about people who need prayer, they're somewhere else. Yep. Right? They're not here. They're somewhere else. It may be online. It may be family members. It may be someone halfway across the world. Does that matter? Not at all. Not at all. So I'm just wondering if your faith is ready to touch something that's further off, Lord. Because if you'll touch the throne, God will touch the people. Right? If you'll touch the throne, God will touch the people. All right? So just take it that way. Jesus. Passed away. Just reminded me. For those of you who are watching online. Jesus. The faith that's here can touch you where you're where you're at, where you're watching it on the bus, in the home, in the car, listening to it. Later if you, on, if you, yeah. later on as, in the name of Jesus, if you're watching Jesus. this later on, Jesus. be healed. Whatever it is, whatever Jesus. part of the body, whatever you're Your believing for, be it. healed in the name of Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Jesus. If you have sickness Jesus. and you're watching this right now, type Jesus. in. Um, we Jesus. have people watching Jesus. what's being written. Jesus. If you t type it in, we will pray for you tonight. Jesus. And you will be healed. Jesus. And it will be to the glory of God Jesus. the Father. Come, this is God Come, demonstrating Lord. his glory. Yes, Lord. Because yes, he gets Lord. praise. Yes, I don't. I don't take credit for any of this. Jesus we don't take Lord. credit Jesus. for any of this. Jesus. It is by the name of who? Whose name? Jesus. Whose name? Jesus. Amen. Amen. By people are being healed. So Jesus. in Jesus' name. I know of one particular friend Jesus. of mine. Jesus. He texted me saying his father has cancer Jesus. and it's really bad. And and he, he doesn't believe in, in God. <laughs> but he's asking me, you know, to pray for his dad. His name his name's Paul. If Paul, if God could heal Paul of cancer, I'm sure my God can heal my friend's, Paul, my friend's dad. His name's Paul. So we're going to pray for him right now because he, he has a checkup. I think it's tomorrow on the 9th for a scan to see how it is. Wouldn't it be great if there was no cancer there and it'd be a testimony of God's power and then it would pray leading them to salvation? God's goodness leads men to repentance. So in the name of Jesus, we command healing over Paul's body. We command healing in Jesus' name that that cancer would go. It would die. We curse you. We command you to shrivel. We command you to go entirely in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, be healed. Right now, in Jesus' name. As Pastor Wade was saying, is there someone you know who needs a touch of God tonight? If you know, raise your hand. I'll come over and we'll pray. Okay, keep your hands up. Tony, go on. My, my, my sister, Jan, has been in to total lockdown f since March. And she sort of comes out. She can't see people. She's got so many issues with health. She takes about 50 tablets a day. Wow. She has one lung. And I spoke to her, I spoke to her yesterday. And she said, um, Jesus. I'm not in a good place at the moment. She said, um, I'm, I don't know what to do. So I said, right, well, I'm a long way from you, but we can step up our conversations. So we, we, have, we have, since March, been having video conversations on a daily basis. Now, I'm not one for being on the phone. I say what I've got to say and I get off. But we speak for an hour, anything from an hour to an hour and 45 minutes wow. every day. And I, I'm, I'm speaking to her about Jesus. She knows of Jesus, but she hasn't got a relationship with him. But she's starting to see some light. So I, I just pray that she uh, lets Jesus into her heart and that um, she gets true salvation. So if, if you would all please remember, in, in, remember her in your prayers. Her name is Jan. 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 Time and stuff Jesus. like this. All right. If you have someone that needs prayer right now, Jesus. in your mind, I want you to think about who they are. Jesus. Just put your hand up. All right. And we're going to pray. We're going to pray together. Jesus. Okay. God doesn't have to listen to one prayer at a time. 
right? He has, he's all knowing, he hears everything at once. So our faith is gonna rise. We wanna touch heaven, yeah? And we're gonna ask God to intervene for these situations that are there. So we're gonna pray on mass in that way. We're not, we don't need to go through every situation because God knows and knowing all those isn't maybe gonna help you in, in that way. So we just, we just wanna go to the Lord and we're just gonna bring all those to him right now. So start lifting your voice. Start calling upon the Lord right now. Mention those people by name before there. Use your voice, saints. Call upon the Lord there. Call upon him. Lord Jesus, thank you that you're the healer. Jesus, you're the healer. Lord, we thank you that healing isn't a place or a time. Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. Lord, you're the healer. And we thank you that you're the God of the whole earth. And we thank you that tonight, Lord, there is healing in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you don't want to heal people's bodies alone. You want to touch their soul. You want to touch their mind. You want to touch their inner being, that they may be in right relationship with you. Lord Jesus, you're the healer. You're the restorer of those who have faith in you. You restore them back to where they should be in right relationship. So we pray that, Lord, you will heal, you will touch, whether it's cancer in Jesus' name, whether it's liver issues in Jesus' name, whether it's skin conditions in Jesus' name. Lord, restore brand new skin. Lord, all that itchy, flaky stuff to go now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that you're Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. You're our heavenly father. And we call upon you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Father, we Jesus. thank you that you are a good and perfect heavenly father. Father, I just, I pray right now for, um, for, for mothers who, who have bad backs because of birth. So in the name of Jesus, I just command all that back pain, all that trauma that the enemy tried to rob you of such a glorious and wonderful and beautiful moment, be healed in the name of Jesus. Father, restore that beautiful moment. I pray for bad backs um, from from uh, that, that pain that, that cuts all the pain off. Jesus, be healed now in Jesus' name. Be healed now in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for family members coming to know you. Father, we thank you for salvation. Father, we thank you for opportunities to share gospel with our family members. We thank you, Father, that, that we bind our family members to the cross of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, you, you are no respecters of persons. You are no respecters of where they're at. Father, get them in the club. Get them as they're drinking a pint. Get them as they're taking drugs. Father, let your voice be stronger than everything else. Father, we pray right now in Jesus' name. We have family members of other religions. Lord, that you would walk into their, their places of so-called worship, their places of false worship. And Lord, that you would make yourself known as the one true and living God. And there is no other name given by men by we must by which we must be saved father lord we pray for our our husbands and our wives who don't know you and, and we pray lord that they would encounter you with power and lord that they would know you there would be a radical difference father we thank you for for them and we bless them in the name of the lord lord we pray for healing of relationships father we're hearing many testimonies tonight of of how you're restoring relationships father restore relationships even more in Jesus name restore the, the the long ones father I pray right now for my grandmother in Jesus name Lord you know she's a witch and Lord, you are more powerful than any witch. You are more powerful than any demon. The demons tremble at your presence. The demons tremble at your presence. So in the name of Jesus, Father, Lord, that you would save my grandmother Constance. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, that whatever is, is bound her be broken. Whatever bondages and agreements be null and void. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would walk into those places of evil. Lord, that you'd walk in and, Lord, that you'd save in Jesus' name. Lord, there is there's no one greater than you and we worship and adore you father we thank you and we pray in the name of Jesus father bless your saints fill your saints with your most holy and precious Holy Spirit come and have your way Holy Spirit you are welcome here do whatever you want you have absolute authority great Holy Spirit move move amongst your people and more and more in Jesus name in Jesus name 
And in Jesus' name. I don't. Okay. You're done now. I don't have anything. Okay, you don't have anything else. Bless. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Now, the whole discussion as to whether Jesus is real, that's over. Yeah, I'm just saying, that's over. Okay, we left that an hour ago. Yeah. The reality that Jesus is alive and he's risen from the dead, that's over. He's alive and he is risen from the dead. And he's active. He's active in people's lives. Now listen, hear me, please. Healing is wonderful. Yeah? But it's nothing. It's nothing compared to having your very inner being restored under the living God. Okay, please hear me. Healing, you, you might be healed today and God forbid you could die tomorrow. Yeah, that's straight up. Yeah, but your soul, your inner core, your being has been bound not just by sickness, but by death itself. Sin binds the human being in its inner core and sin always brings death. And there is no escape. Taxes and funerals apply to everybody. Yeah, there is no escape. Yeah, and the only way that inner being can be made right. Jesus, he came and he died. The Bible says that he bore our sin in his body on the tree. He bore it in fullness. He bore it in completion. Sin was that enemy at the beginning that brought death. God says, the day you disobey, the day you, you sin, you shall die. The Bible says in Ezekiel, the soul who sins shall die. And death is hunting every one of us down because of sin. But Jesus came. He came and he bore our sin on the cross. He took our death at the cross. And he rose again victorious over sin, over death, and over every satanic work. Every satanic work. In Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. Acts 10 and verse 38. Speaks of the life and ministry of Jesus. Peter's preaching. We're going to keep this quick and to the point. It says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all, healing who? Healing all who were what? Oppressed of who? You know what it doesn't say? It doesn't say all who were oppressed of God. Please hear me. Every person that Jesus healed, every life that he touched, it doesn't say God did it to them. It doesn't say that the God of heaven is sitting there with some stick, beating as many people as he can, and Jesus had to come interrupt God's fun. It doesn't say that. It says they were oppressed by who? The devil. He's the enemy of souls. And Jesus is greater. He's the enemy of souls. But Jesus is greater. The Bible says in Hebrews 2 that Jesus became like us so that he could destroy him who had the power of death. That is the devil. And he could release those who through fear of death were held in bondage all their lifetime. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus came to destroy those things that oppress. Jesus came to restore human beings to be in right relationship with God. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know what I don't find in heaven? The devil ain't there. The devil's not in heaven. He ain't got no authority. And everything that he brings has no authority. My Bible tells me he's already been cast in that lake of fire when Jesus comes in power. And he will deal with everything and restore everything that God intended it to be like. Sorry, Edson, I'm not making your job any easier on that camera.
You know, there is no addiction in heaven unless you're addicted to Jesus. Unless you're addicted to Jesus, and that's okay. That's when you want to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Yeah, you prioritize him above everything else. You don't hold back, you run full on. Jesus didn't hold back when he went to the cross, did he? He said, well, I'm only going to go partial way for here. You know, I mean, I'll give half my blood. I'll give half of my life. Is that what he did? Three quarters. 99%. You know, he still wanted to keep that 1% back for himself. You know how it is. He gave everything, saints, to redeem you from all lawlessness, that which was destroying your very soul. Listen, forgiveness and eternal life isn't something that God does so that you just don't have to go to hell. Please hear me. It's the sin that's destroying you. It's, the, it's that addiction that's destroying you. It's that lying tongue that's destroying you. It's that immorality that's ruining you. Every other sin a man commits is outside his own body. But he who sins sexually sins against his own body. It's the sin that's killing you. But Jesus came to save his people from their sins. He came to take it away. How far? As far as the east is from the west. The Bible says, God says, come, let us reason together. Let us think about it together. Though your sins, they're red like crimson. They shall be as white as wool. Though they're, they're, they're red like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. He takes it away. That's the restoration. Because he takes it away and instead of death, he replaces it with life and righteousness. A right standing with your creator. A right standing with God. Imagine that. If you're in right standing with God, what's impossible then? He can fix marriages. Save husbands and wives. Stop people from arguing. <laughs> fix. 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 <laughs> it's just fix, fix lives with brothers. Amazing, isn't it? And see, this is what it means to be a witness. This is what it means to be a witness. And I'm so proud of you. I just want to say that in the Lord, I am. I'm watching what God's doing in your life. And it's amazing. You're standing in the gap for others on the street. And God says, I'll stand in the gap for her brother. <laughs> yeah. And he's restoring something. Yeah, six years a long time. Yeah. Lord, save him. Lord, save him. And well done in being one to say, you know, it is Jesus who's changed my heart. That's why I can forgive. That's why that anger goes away. Yeah, it's new life. It's in him. Yeah. Jesus was anointed by God. And he came and he healed all who were oppressed of the devil. Let me tell you this, saints, that tonight God isn't oppressing people. He's not oppressing you. Yeah, and if you're watching online tonight, God's not trying to oppress you. He's not out to beat you. He's not out to destroy you. He sent his son, Jesus, God incarnate. God with skin on his face came down to this planet so that he could bear on himself that sin, that death. The Bible says that he bore our infirmities. He carried our sicknesses. And by his stripes, we are the healed. He came and took all of it. There is no sickness in heaven. There is no death in heaven. Do you know there's not even tears in heaven? I, you know, I'm glad about that, I have to say. You know why? Maybe not the way you'd think of it. Because I tell you, you know, my mama, when I used to do things, you know, give her something I made at school, she'd cry. I think you do something wrong. No, she I'm just so full of joy and so full of happiness that you did that for me. And mamas, you know what that's like. You know, that little crinkled piece of paper that nobody else would value. But to you, it's like, it's just awesome. And it brings that joy and the tears to your eye, doesn't it? Why? Because joy can do that. My Bible tells me that in his presence... There's fullness of joy. 
I tell you, if he hadn't took tears away, I wouldn't be able to get off my face for a million and a half years. Just out of gratitude for being able to be there. Jesus came to restore. Jesus did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. The Son of Man came to restore and to save. And tonight, if you're not saved, you need to be. And hear me, God commands, God commands all men everywhere to repent. Ladies, don't worry, that includes you too. Yeah, he's just using it in general, mankind, human beings, all people everywhere. God commands, don't be disobedient to this command. He commands all men everywhere to repent, to turn to his son, Jesus, to put your trust in him because he died. He was buried. He rose again from the dead. So only he can save. He's the only one that has eternal life. Buddha doesn't have it. Muhammad doesn't have it. There's no other foreign God that has it. Right. Idols can't talk. They can't see. We worship the living God. You've seen him at work tonight. He's healing. He's restoring. You've heard testimony after testimony of what he's doing. He's the living God in whom you can put your trust. And there's only one name given among men. Whereby we must, we can be saved. It was necessary for the Christ to suffer and die. So that repentance and forgiveness of sin could be preached in all nations. And that's us now. Us now. Jesus is alive. And he can save you to the uttermost. Completely. And because he's always alive, even if you mess up along the way, guess who restores? The Bible tells me he's our propitiation. He's the one that stands there in the presence of the Father with the only man-made things in heaven. The very scars on his body, the very, the very holes in his hands, in his feet, and in his side. And he says, Father, the covenant payment has already been made. God doesn't change. He's always holy. He hates sin. The reason you're not thrown out of the family is because Jesus stands in the gap continually. He is a great high priest. And he's there forever. He is the propitiation. The one who turns aside wrath on your behalf because you belong to him. He reconciles us to God. I wonder tonight if you have put your trust in Jesus and him alone. Christ alone, my hope is found. Yeah, in Christ, I don't trust in anything else but his blood and his righteousness. Jesus is Lord. Let's just bow our heads and pray as we finish up tonight. Some of you have been healed tonight. You've been healed of physical things. Maybe you've just in your heart you were healed in the midst of it. Just the faith that was rising did your heart good. But I tell you something, Jesus wants to restore so much more in your life. So that you're on fire for him. So that you burn for him. So that there's no dark spots in your, in your soul. There's no, there's no gaps where his, his light doesn't reach. There's no issues there. Where closets, as they say, where you're hiding something. You need to open those to him right now. Jesus, come. Jesus, come. And just take over. Jesus, come. Lord, every area of soul. Every area of heart. Every area of mind. Depression in the name of Jesus. We break you in the name of Jesus. It has no authority in this place. Where the, where the sun is and where the spirit is, the sun sets you free and where the spirit is, there is liberty. And he's at work. Jesus. Surrender to him. Amen. It is, June. Hallelujah. Surrender to him. I get this in my heart right now. Some of you might be holding back in what he's wanting to do in your life. He's saying, well, Jesus, if I gave everything to you, you might make me do something I don't want to do. Uh, can I just tell you, repent of that? The reason you need to repent of it is because you don't understand who he is. Do you think he's that mean? 
Do you think he said, well, yeah, I'll wait till you come to me. I'll heal you, do all this stuff. And then when you come to me, and then I'm going to torture you. That's just so off. He's not like that. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. There's no shadow of turning with him. He doesn't wait for you to come and then jump on you like that. He has a good plan and a good purpose for your life. You can surrender to it and say yes. This morning, Doug was sharing about how, the, how he, he went from, Lord, I'll do this and I'll do this. And then, oh, Lord, I'll do this and I'll, I'll do that. And I finally got to the point, says, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'll do. That's the best response. Say, well, I want to do this for God. Don't worry about it. God can handle it. You just let him do what he wants in you. Surrender to him now. Surrender to him now. That's real healing. Being able to submit to the will of God with a whole heart, that's real healing. Jesus. Father, we just thank you tonight for your love. Thank you that you're the God who sees. Thank you that there's nothing hidden from your sight. Thank you that you're the one that reaches down into the depth of our being, every root of bitterness to be removed. Lord, unforgiveness to be released tonight. We release those who, Lord, we've held things against. We release it, Lord, in Jesus' name. We release them from the debt that we believe they owe. You have forgiven us a great debt. And Lord, so we let go of any bitterness, any unforgiveness, any resentment. Jesus, restore relationships afresh. But above all that, Lord, restore those tonight to yourself. Lord, as they surrender themselves to you in the name of Jesus, who is Lord, that, Lord, you would restore them to your own self. Lord, make yourself known in them. Lord, let that healing of soul, of mind, of the inner, inner being and all of its fullness, Lord, heal them so deep that their nature changes in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, we will give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Hallelujah.